Hello, 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 guys. Welcome to the Kange household of faith. Today is an amazing day in the presence of in God. And presence guess of what? The Lord. God is on the move. Always God, on the yeah. move. God is on the move, and today is not an exception. I hope you're ready because God has been ready. Looking forward to this day and what is going to be happening. So, greetings to all of you. It's a pleasure having you guys. So, let's see who is on. Hallelujah. Welcome, Minister Neri. <laughs> hey, Abby. Hallelujah. You are welcome to Family Corner. Praise the Lord. God is good. We will be having Jesus. a gorgeous time. Pastor Pony, you had a good day? Yes, sir. A good day. Good, good, Had good. a great day. Hallelujah. The Father is wonderful. Yes, he yes. is. Praise the Lord. Oh yes, sharing time. Sharing time. So sharing time. We are going to be sharing. Facebook <laughs> sharing. Facebook sharing. Sharing sharing. Hello, Pastor Comfort. Welcome to the broadcast. Alright. Bless the Lord, oh my soul. So let's see what Father God has Get to say to us today. So for those of you who are just joining, by the way, we had a new class of year ones. Yeah. School of Ministry. We had, uh, um, they had their first freshmen session yesterday. So it was beautiful yesterday. It was wonderful. It was wonderful. So those of you who are still processing registering, I think you have, a, I think, a class or two max and then that's it you can't you can't enroll this year you will have to wait so you still have a thinker class um, um to be able to catch up and that will be it for this year's enrollment and you will have to wait for the next batch of students it's going to be fun but suppose you know what i'm looking forward to no sir the graduation oh. because these are pandemic babies <laughs> You know, I never thought about it. It's a pandemic baby. Pandemic baby. <laughs> yeah, they they started school. You know, they are graduating in a few months. Uh, the first, the first, um, this this pandemic babies. I mean, you know, <laughs> pandemic babies will be graduating soon. Um, they still have a few months to go. Yep, and it's going to be exciting. So I'm looking forward to graduating the pandemic class. <laughs> So these are the ones who are going to go to the nations and take down every virus. In the name of Jesus. Yeah. God is good. Hey, Minister Felicia. Good to see you. Yes, that's true. Good to see you. Hello, Pastor Eunice. Hello, hello. Kiana. Minister Daisy. Hello, God bless you. Hello, good to have all hello. of you. Hi, Pastor Comfort. Hi, 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 hi. Happy. So Minister today we plan Donna. on having an, an interesting conversation, right? And um, as we enroll, we're talking about enrolling students of the School of Ministry, mm -hmm. one of the courses that we're talking about is prayer. So we studied prayer, and um, you, 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 you teach prayer, mm -hmm. and um, we also um, were teaching faith, so I, I teach faith. And today we will be talking about the prayer of faith. <laughs> Hallelujah. It's going to be fun, you know, bringing in prayer and faith together. <laughs> It will be great. Hallelujah. Okay. <laughs> we'll be talking about Let's that do today. Let's do it. Praise God. So um, we will go ahead and begin to pray. For we are mightily expectant. Amen. Your people are laughing at pandemic babies. Yeah. You guys are pandemic babies. You, I mean, you, uh, they, they, uh, there are two ways you can look at them. You can look at them as pandemic babies or you can look at them as shelter of the most high babies. <laughs> because, you know, pandemic season was retreat season. You right. Know, get on retreat and come before the Lord. And, and you guys did a good job by, you know, uh, enrolling in the school of ministry. And um, it's almost a year mm -hmm. since your, your enrollment. And, and that was wonderful. God, God has taken you guys faithfully through that journey up till yes. now and um, new students are coming so hallelujah it's beautiful yep having fun with school of ministry that's right 
That's right. It would be fun to have some of your students on one of your Kange Household of Faith broadcasts. Yeah, but definitely. You know, come on and tell us, you know, what's up with school, what's been going on, and, and so on and so forth, and how you've been transformed what by has school. What's been their experience? Yeah, yeah. It'd be wonderful. Yeah. So let's call on Jesus now. You know, let's call on Jesus. And I'm very persuaded that he'll come when we call him. <laughs> yeah. Amen. Hallelujah. So, Father, 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 we thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Mighty is our God. Yes. Hallelujah. In whom all things consist. Father, tonight, we ask that you would reign in our midst. That you would feed us this day. Thank you, Father, for making good on your word, making good on your promises. Be exalted, Father. Be exalted, Lord God. Be exalted. Be exalted. Be exalted. Be exalted. Be exalted. Be exalted. Be exalted, Lord God. We worship you, Lord. Le karaba sotori arama kasanda rala muko shanda raba. Eneliana landa kebrando soni venda la saka parosa. Le remo sakira ma shanda rala muko mianda rala di kapato. Yesi kato le brahanda zukori anda di kobrende se. Brako shande bizo kando rabra godi li bagan. Hantos kibando la. We magnify you, Father. There is no one like you, Lord God. No one like you, Jesus. No one like you, Lord. No one like you, Lord. No one like you, Lord. We bless your holy name. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 For those of you who are just joining us, you're welcome. We are going to get into the Word of God right now. We, 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 we hope that you have your notes, everything in place, because we are going to be studying. We're going to study, and by the grace of God, we will go through the Word of God and, and um, bring forth in a creative manner what God has to say to us. Amen. In Jesus' name. Amen. <clears throat> so, today, as we were saying earlier on, the plan is to talk to you about prayer and faith. Prayer and faith. Prayer and faith. So we want to speak from that place. Now, there are a few scriptures in the Word of God, not many, but there are a few scriptures in the Word of God that sort of combine the word prayer and faith in the same sentence. Okay. And, and the very first one that we are going to start looking at is out of the book of James. So we are going to start with the book of James. Now the book of James is right before, right before Peter, okay, right before Peter, first Peter, you would find the book of James. So we are in the book of James, thank you Father. Lord God, even with this teaching today, may you shift us into another level in the name of Jesus. Hey, Tolu. So good to see you. It's been a while. God bless you. So we are in James chapter 5. The very first thing we need to start saying when we, when we are, every, every time, every time that I come to the book of James, I can't help but reconsider the fact that a pastor is speaking okay that's the first thing mm -hmm. a pastor is speaking and 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 when we talk about that the reason why i like going back to the fact that a pastor is speaking is is the fact that when you start out in the book of james the very first message from a very strange pastor this guy is okay. this guy is amazing he begins to start saying to you that you ought to count it all joy that is how, you know, he, he, he begins his, his conversation. 
That's interesting. So, Pastor James, right? James was a pastor. Pastor James lets the people know trials are normal. Now, this is quite an interesting um, um, shift in perspective because prior to James, we are coming from a line of apostles, people who walked with mirac in, in miracle signs and wonders, you know, people whose shadow will heal the sick, you know. We, we, we are coming from that place. And then we come and meet James who says to you, let me pin the picture to you guys. If you have an evangelist at your church, he comes and ministers and tells people, you're going to get your miracle today, right? People's faith is built up for today. Mm -hmm. Then after the evangelist leaves, it's three days program. It's done. The pastor has to say, yeah, today is today, but let's understand that some miracles could take, take time. Mm -hmm. I, I can just imagine when one of your Christians comes to you and says, pastor, I was believing God for the miracle to happen yesterday. And, and it's been two days. It has not happened yet. Mm -hmm. But the man of God said we are receiving today. Mm -hmm. And then the pastor has to now take... And we sowed seeds on the word. We, thank you, sister. We sowed seeds on the word. We knew it was happening now. Mm -hmm. and, and so Pastor James has to come in and begin to have a very unusual conversation. And the conversations out of the book of James are not day-to-day -day conversations that believers want to have. So James will talk to you about this. Right? That there are diverse temptations. Everyone is being tried. And then James goes ahead and tells you things like, be, be watchful what you say. Mm -hmm. And he tells you things like, sweet waters and bitter waters don't come out of the same fountain. Mm -hmm. That's James. That's the kind of conversation that James has. It is James who's going to tell you that after patience has had its work, mm -hmm. then you'll be entire wanting nothing. Right. What, what, a, what a transition. And he also tells you that you have a part to play. Yeah. In the Faith without works is dead. Of God's word. So <laughs> all of these put things, aside the yeah. superfluity of naughtiness mm -hmm. and embrace the word and be a doer. Right. You know. And 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 Faith and he's the one who comes to us and he says, Abraham, our father, justified by works when he offered Isaac on the altar. So he brings a perfect balance between I have faith. And I have works. Mm -hmm. A very beautiful balance. Show me your works. I will show you my faith. Or show me my faith. I will um, show um, you um, my faith, faith by, by my, my works. works. You know, so he, he really establishes the fact that when someone says they are in faith, you can look at what they are doing and see faith at work. Right. Because for some time it, it was a, like a challenging discussion for some people listening to a preaching that says you know it is by faith not of works lest any man should boast so how do you contrast that scripture with faith without works is dead coming to that place where you see the the difference between works of faith and works of the flesh you know it is a little confusing for some people to comprehend so it's nice to listen to someone like James and see how he takes the time to break it down yeah. verse by verse to explain to the believer that you, you don't obtain salvation by works, but that there is a work of faith, right. which is your obedience to the instruction God gives you right. while you are in faith. Because the proof of your faith is your obedience to the instruction you're given. Yeah. You know, so bringing that balance and, and it's to help the he, believer understand. He moves you know, in between the two, shall I say, schools of thought. Mm. And, and comes on this other side and he says, by works shall no man be justified. Mm -hmm. You know, like we read um, um, out of James, James chapter 2, verse 24. Mm. And then he, he really talks between these two things and you can see the word of God come into life. So, those of you who by, 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 by any means have a struggle on, on, on how to handle faith and works, Boy, that you have to visit the book of James. It is interesting, right? Yeah. It is interesting. And, and it, is, it is the same James who says to us, Brethren, uh, um, make sure that many of you are not all about being masters. Because as masters, you will receive greater mm -hmm. condemnation. Mm -hmm. oh, you, you know? So 
a lot of balancing comes in here and he tells us the tongue is a little member but oh mm. boy that it will cause a lot of fire you know and he's the one who also says if you resist the devil right he's going to flee from you but it is not an empty shelled um, um, resistance of the devil you must Submit, submit yourself to God, to God. So you see, there's a lot of balancing that James does all throughout the word of God. Mm -hmm. Now, James comes to James chapter 5, and, and, and when he's talking about all of these things, he, he now begins to talk about how to handle riches. Mm -hmm. And he says, you've got to make sure that you don't exact your workers. Right. Give every man what he's due. And, and Pastor Pauline, that's the reason why there is a, 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 a sense of, of, of rewarding people just because they were present. Because you can always find reasons why someone wasn't perfect at the workplace. Mm. And because of that, pay them according to you know, their, their coins worth, right? right? But then you have to be able to say, but, but they were present. There is a fee that goes for presence. And, and you know, that's a whole new story by itself. And, and so he says all of that and now comes and begins to have conversation about the possibility that a child of God can be sick. Mm -hmm. Wow. Now, that, that sort of just passes through the atmosphere and just, you know, puts a knife through the cheese. But, <laughs> but right here, this conversation is rather important. And, and not only does James say this, he also comes to this point where he says in, in, in James chapter 5, if any have committed sin. Now, this boy just, just he, what, 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 what? How can you be talking to believers and you mention sin? So this, the, the part that James plays as a pastor in the word of God, it's amazing. Considering that there are just but five chapters of the book of James. Yet it's like someone just goes through the entire life of a child of God and compresses all of these different teachings. Mm -hmm. Like from chapter to chapter, you find something that addresses circumstances in the body of Christ. Right. What a pastor. And to give us a healthy perspective. Right. So you are not lopsided. <laughs> yes. You, 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 the, the challenge is to, like you're saying, he, his, his job was to bring balance. So we want to be able to look into this and also analyze our lives and our work of faith yeah. to make sure that we are not moving from one extreme to the other extreme. You know, either you're fluctuating to this end or you're fluctuating to the other end. Being able to find that middle ground staying in the middle of the road rather than from one end of the road to the other end so it is so important for us to be able to have that because if you are in a situation where you, from when you got born again you have experienced and enjoyed good health you have never known what it means to be sick since yeah. you said lord jesus come into my heart mm -hmm. It's a beautiful place to be in because it's a possibility in God. That is the destination. Yes. The destination is good health. I wish above all things that you prosper and be in health. Yes. So if you are experiencing that, it's a blessing. Mm -hmm. But do you know how to handle oh, come the on. other child of God? Come on, come on. Who come on. is still progressing from being sick mm -hmm. to healing? And their destination is good health. Mm. But it is already, your, you have already arrived at that destination, at least so far. Right. How do you know how to handle the other child of God who is still walking this process? And, and, and while you're, you're talking about that, as, as a minister, as a pastor, as a fellow believer, mm -hmm. you know, James sort of brings in, or shall I say, throws light into the concept of what shall I do if my brother has no clothes? Mm -hmm. If someone comes to me, do I just say, you know, go, go ahead and be blessed and, and not minister to that need? And, and so he, while he is saying in the body of Christ, people do have needs, he, yeah. he, he brings in this angle. Listen, guys, there is remedy. Yes. There is remedy to these things. And, and then he goes, he goes like this. God is an answer and you are an answer. Right. 
And so the best way to put that, God is an answer and you are the channel. Mm -hmm. Is any among you sick? Let him call for the yeah, elders, yeah. right? So and, you see him throwing keys. Yeah. That are supposed to unlock certain things or you like i would normally say tools in your toolbox right he's telling you you have a toolbox they are full of t tools mm -hmm. do you know which tool to use when right if anyone is sick among you so he's telling you there's a possibility yes good health is our portion yes because jesus took stripes on his back so we can experience good health right but there is a possibility that a child of god can be afflicted come on yes in their bodies yeah so this is a tool yeah to use in case that shows up you know what pastor pauline we are talking about this and i can go back to earlier days in my life my walk with god when i hadn't had any kind of comprehension of this mm -hmm. because again you can wonder we have been called unto quote unquote prosperity mm -hmm. is, is it possible not to have money in your bank account and now how, and, and how do you handle that and that's right how do yeah. you handle that and if you don't have money in your bank account can you still dress well and can and, you smell well and, <laughs> and, and Pastor Peter, yeah th this is another question yeah in in an atmosphere of faith or in a faith-filled home oh come on yeah, a faith, that. Come a faith on. conscious home yes is there a possibility mm -hmm. that this can be a discussion oh yes because we we can be so focused on you know we're talking about faith we have to speak what we want to see yes. if you don't want to see it in your future don't say it today yeah. how do you balance that out with an experience where wherein you you don't have any money in your bank account and your daughter comes to you and says i need money for this and that Right. How do you respond? How do you, handle that? How do you handle that? How do you have the conversation? Right. Or, <laughs> or, or a, a family member or a church member is sick in their bodies. Mm -hmm. And you have prayed. It's not like you have not prayed. Right. You have laid hands. You, you have prayed. You have confessed scripture. You have given them scriptures. <clears throat> you, and and they, the, the healing is still to come into full manifestation in the natural. Right how do you have that conversation or is it something that you just sweep under the rug and avoid talking about it because you don't want to face it because it's 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 a tough topic to take on that james is taking on in, yeah. you know in the whole yeah. book of james it's yeah. like every top topic almost comes across as um you have to tread carefully on this because there may be a school of thought that will be saying you are speaking unbelief Right. And there may be another school of thought that is saying that you are compromising the stand of the word of God. Or right. there will be another <laughs> school of thought on this opposite end that will say, you know, you're taking this thing too far. So dealing with all of this, it's challenging. So you see him coming in and even trying to give explanations as yes. to why you can pray and your prayer is not answered. Oh, so you, he even admits that there's a possibility that you may not have your prayer answered at the so time, when, at you the time when you want it so he's right. looking at these different angles yeah. and he's not saying this is the problem with you he's saying this is a possibility this is a possibility you will be able to analyze your life right. to see which of these possibilities is your situation you know Pastor Pauline, this is rather interesting because even as we talk about this james is the one who says to us irrespective of what you are going through as a child of God, make sure you are not double-minded. Mm -hmm. You must maintain your stance as a child of yes. God. If you believe that God is the healer, don't go another direction. Right. He's, the he healer, he's the healer. He's the healer. That's it. Do not be double-minded because a double-minded person is unstable in, in all, all of his ways. ways. And that double-minded person should not think they are going to get anything, anything. from the Lord. That is whoa right and so he has that conversation and he comes to us and says listen you must be a doer of the word right because if you're not a doer of the word you're like someone who looks at himself in the mirror mm -hmm. forgets who they are and then goes about doing something else right you know tries to adjust themselves from the perfect into the imperfect mm -hmm. oh, i mean that's kind of ironic because we ought to adjust ourselves from, from the, the imperfect, imperfect to the, to, perfect. You, to the perfect because that's the role of the 
mirror. Yes. The mirror is the word of God. So mm -hmm. when we look at where James is coming from and having all of these conversations, it is amazing. The Bible says um, in, in James chapter 1 verse 25, but whoso looketh in the perfect mm. law of liberty and continuous daring, he shall not be a forgetful hearer, but a doer of the work. Of the work. This man shall be blessed in indeed. Indeed. Right? Yes. This man shall be blessed. So James is saying to you, listen, I'm, I need to tell you this. There is a fine line. This is possible. This is the ideal. Mm -hmm. Right? Yes. And then these are the things you're supposed to do. If you now, if now you do these things, you will fall right at the center of the ideal. Exactly. So it is interesting oh, this is good. the way he handles everything. And of course, who better to talk about religion? <laughs> but the pastor. And another example is the way he talked about um, um, asking and receiving, right? He says, you have not because you ask not. Then he goes on to say, okay, for those of you who have asked and you still haven't had, it may be because you are asking amiss. And then, oh, you are, let me explain to you what it means to ask amiss. You are asking to consume it upon your own lust. Right. And some of you, you, you really cannot receive because there's war in your members. So there's no congruence. And that war within your members is extended externally where you begin to now fight other people and you're engaging in fights with other people in strife because within you, there is already a war going on. You know, Pastor Pauline, I, I just want to give this example to a few people, those of you who are in business, you know, um, 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 not just business, uh, uh, but, but business especially. Mm -hmm. I found this very interesting thing happening in my life. A few years ago, I began to I wouldn't say double, but I got into uh, um, trading currency. Mm -hmm. And I found out trading currency that nothing can derail a trader like the lack of harmony. Oh my goodness. Yeah. You, there has to be harmony residing there within you. To. You cannot be doing, shall I shan't i no no you you have to you you have to have harmony in your being oh the harmony. woulda shoulda coulda oh, you no. have to deal with them before. oh yes oh yes oh yes so there has to be harmony within and there has to be harmony without yes and and i found that in fact it, it, there was a point i was i was asking myself is the devil in this thing because there you are trading and then you wonder what just happened? <laughs> right. What just happened? What just happened to my money? And and when I began to understand that there is such a thing as the perfect law of liberty, oh, I began to understand the absolute necessity that resides with harmony. Yes, harmony is interesting. It 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 will it, it harmony is is, is just something. <laughs> there has to be harmony. You know, <laughs> harmony is just what it is. If, if you are a musician, Peace you will appre appreciate harmony. harmony. Yes. If you are in business, you will appreciate harmony. Yes. Where there is war and turbulence in any nation, the economy suffers. Yes. And so, for those of you who are businessmen and women, who are traders, who are you know all of these things, hoping to increase yourselves. Right? You want a harmonious atmosphere at your workplace, among your staff members. Oh my God, L listen, you, can, you should be able to pay money for peace. Doesn't that explain why when you are at the verge of something major? Oh, come on. Come it's on. like come on. Say that, the sister. enemy say, just say comes up with some mm. stupid argument with someone from out. It's like out of nowhere. You, so you have to pull yourself back and say, wait a minute. What are we even fighting about again? Right. What, what exactly yeah. is this argument about? Yeah. If you don't catch yourself, you will notice you have jumped into that pool of strife and the devil just destabilizes everything yeah. that was supposed to happen in your world. There was a flow towards you yeah. of a miracle and that strife 
just destabilize everything. everything. So, so child of God, this is this is huge, right? This is huge. I mean, tonight the goal is not an overview, quote unquote overview of the book of James, but I must tell you this. This pastor is amazing. <laughs> this pastor is amazing. There's a whole lot that he has to say. That's and that's right. the reason why when he comes up to, to um, um, chapter 5, mm -hmm. He begins to talk about creating a harmonious atmosphere at your workplace. He says, Behold, the hire of the laborers who have ripped down your fields, which is of you kept back by fraud, crieth. Verse 4 of chapter 5. Oh, oh yes, forgive me. Verse 4 of chapter 5. And he says, That money is crying in your pockets. Yes. So, oh my God. You know, today we were handed a... a, a, a a bill of $45,000. And I'm thinking, $45,000? What, what is this that you're talking about? $45,000? I was like, no, 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 no. And, and I had to say to myself, Father, no one's money is in my pocket and crying. Right. I cannot be stolen from. Right. I reject this plan of in darkness with every of fiber of my being. Now, I have to pray like that because on the flip side, God, the righteous God, is involved with you at your workplace. Yes. He's involved with you while you're doing business. Come He's on. involved Amen. with you when you're teaching children. He's involved with you when you're taking care of patients. He's involved with you as a contractor. He's he, God, yes. the righteous judge. Amen. He is all over these places. Amen. So, oh yes, when we do what is right, then we know right is coming to us. Amen. Amen. Mm. Right is coming to us. So, so, so when we end the book of James tonight, you, you know, talking from from uh, the table, so to say, or the <laughs> desk of of this pastor, it's important to lay this foundation so we all understand why these things are a conversation. In in verse nine, right? Are you ready for verse nine? Yes. He says, "Grudge not one against another, brethren, lest ye be what condemned." Behold, the judge standeth before the door. Mm -hmm. I mean, there are unique things in the book of James. I know right now, guys, that many of you are fired up, ready to go and read the book of James. Oh, yes, go read it. Yes. <laughs> right? Go into the book of James and, 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 and just be blessed by the words of this pastor. He's amazing. Amen. He says, above all things, my brethren, swear not, neither by heaven nor by earth. Don't get into swearing. Oh, you know, you, well, don't get into swearing. Yeah. Lest ye fall into condemnation. You see, again, this particular thing, verse 12, James chapter 5, verse 12, is addressing people who think life is as strict as a ruler. Mm. I am going to do this thing unfailingly. Okay. Those are people who are perfectionists. Mm. Those are people who are very legal mm -hmm. in their approach to life. And God is saying, no, 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 no. Don't play that game right there because you are not God. Right. You are not God. I, I, yes, I, I get it. You can make plans. You can have goals. You can have all of this. But you can't do that omitting the God who controls mm. all things. You must commit your ways to the Lord. Come on. Then he will direct your That's path. That's right. That's right. You, That's you, right. You can't. Uh, um, um, Proverbs 27 verse 1. Yes. It says, do not boast about tomorrow for you don't even know what the day will bring forth. That's so right. there's something about being able to say God willing. Like scripture says, yeah. be able to say tomorrow, God willing, I'll yes. be able to do this yes. and that. Yes. And yes. if you have that approach, then you, you tend to also extend mercy mm -hmm. to someone who made a promise and couldn't keep it. You are more merciful because you are seeing the fallibility side of the human being rather than just, you know, a, a stringent, strict, stoic personality that mm -hmm. says, you know, you, you cross me wrongly, that's it. It's yeah. over. You <laughs> right. know, you are able to show mercy. Mm -hmm. and, and you know, some people boast at this. They say, you know, I am a very loving person, but if you cross me, <laughs> I cross you. <laughs> <laughs> Hallelujah. May God deliver us from crossing people out. Right? Delete. I mean, you are Delete. a person, you are planning on going to heaven. What if... I mean, it's not even possible, but let me just say this to you. It would be very awkward that the person you crossed is your neighbor in heaven, right? But this is how God solves that problem. 
All of those who are planning on crossing people out, <laughs> they will not make it. They will not make it to heaven. So, you know, so let's just fix this crossing thing and just get out of there and leave people alone. Amen. Nobody owes you holiness. Why you did not do this? You did not do this. So I'm just crossing you out. Stop crossing people out. That's okay. You can take someone off your contact list. Yeah, that's okay. But don't be crossing people. For peace sake. Yeah, for because peace sake. Because it's a point where you need your peace. Yeah. Jesus paid for your peace. Right. Scripture says the punishment that was supposed to bring you peace was placed upon him. Right. So there is no price tag for peace. Mm -mm. Seriously, <laughs> because you need that harmonious atmosphere. Yeah. You, you, have you ever had a situation where you've gone through a fast? Three days fast. One week fast. You are in this high. And then a dump truck comes. Then somebody <laughs> comes with a dump truck. <laughs> And they decided to dump their trash on you. And you take the bait. You take the offense. And you can literally feel yeah. the oil mm. leak out of you. Mm -hmm. Lord have mercy. All of that, one week of fasting or three days of fasting, messed up. The, no, the most devil is alive. draining sin. The most draining sin, the most hindering sin, the most obstructive sin to the move of God, to the glory of God, is offense. It's offense. Mark chapter 6, the Bible says Jesus could not do many could miracles. Not. I mean, I don't know whether you understand could what not. could not means. Could, could not. not means. In his own could hometown. Not. Yeah, because the people were offended yeah. at him and he marveled at their unbelief. Wow. This is someone that has been, it had been recorded that he moved with compassion and yeah. he healed an entire yeah. crowd, a multitude of people. Even when they didn't have faith. Yes. Yeah. But he comes to his own hometown and he struggles. And the Bible clearly says, except for the fact that he laid his hands on a few sick folk and healed them. And, and Pastor Colleen, do you see that when offense was in play, Jesus had to drop down from the glory realm where he spoke things and things happened. The Bible says with his word, he commanded the demons mm -hmm. and, 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 and sickness came. He dropped from that glory realm, that global manifestation mm -hmm. into laying hands. To individuals. To individuals so that yeah. there can be a transfer. That's, that's because something. There's a, there's a place like that. There's a place like that, especially with the compassion of a pastor. Mm -hmm. There is a place like that where you, you, you are at a certain realm and you can see the glory of God. You can sense the presence of God. You know that God is present and there is a, a move of the spirit that is pending. But it seems to be hanging at the same time. And, and sometimes you, 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 you make statements to try to get the people to see what you're seeing. Because they can only receive what they are able to see, right? Yeah. As far as your eyes can see. So God will constantly ask, what do you see? What do you see? Because if you can have a revelation of it, when light comes, then everything will shift. So when you are able to find yourself in that position, sometimes you are, I don't know if I should say forced, but yeah, it's like you are forced out of compassion, out of um, the care for the sheep. You will tell yourself, okay, let me do a few things to get them to see what is really going on and so you begin to explain things maybe you, you you explain some things from scripture you show a few scriptures you explain what is happening in the atmosphere so that the people will come into a place of awareness yep. because it's an invitation for them to come up higher mm -hmm. so they can access this glory realm that's present mm -hmm. and if you have done all of that and they still like they don't even know what you're talking about and you can see that this person is sick. They need this glory atmosphere. This one is depressed. They need this glory atmosphere. This one is broke. They need this. <laughs> there is a thing that rises up within you as a parent, as a pastor, that says, okay, I think at this point, I'll have to come to that place where I will lay hands and kind of help them access it. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Because there's a place where you can, you can push someone into a destiny position in God. Mm -hmm. So that compassion will move you to that place. So I think that's what was happening with Jesus here. Right. Where now the Bible says, 
he could not do many miracles except for the fact that he laid his hands on a few sick folk and healed them. So he was able to minister to a few of them one on one right. and got them healed. Yeah. But the move of God was blocked was by offense. stifled God. by offense. My God, my God, yeah. my God. Well, may the Lord help us not to find ourselves in this kind of situation. You know, Pastor Pauline, one of the most dangerous combinations in the body of Christ mm -hmm. is that of a husband and a wife in ministry who are not in agreement. Oh my goodness. You know, the word of God clearly says, if any two shall agree as touch him. Right? And, and when you find a couple that is in the husband says this, the wife is saying this other one. The person is thinking, why are you doing ministry like this? Why are you doing ministry like this? And sometimes it's weird when you find a naughty husband. But I'm just saying from <laughs> the standpoint of a man, you know, I'm not saying that it's expected of women to be naughty. But, no, know, but naughtiness um, just looks really terrible on men. Because <laughs> the concept of a man already <laughs> suggests a certain level of, you know. Machoness. Yes, you have to be macho. You have to be manly. Oh, oh. So naughtiness doesn't look right <laughs> on a man. All right, man. Like, why are you naughty? What is that? So, so we understand whatever is born of God overcoming the world. Right. And this goes to the guys, right? <laughs> Hallelujah. Well, bless the Lord, oh my soul. So, it goes to the ladies too. <laughs> we are not, we, we refuse to be categorized as naughty. The yeah. devil has lied. Praise you know, the but, Lord. But it can be manageable on a woman. <laughs> it's, really, it's like if you find a man that talks too much. Oh boy. It's like it's almost acceptable for a woman to talk to me. Right, but if you find a man that's going, yaki, 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 you'll be like, get a grip. What's from wrong? The I'm not the one who said it. Hallelujah. It really kind of looks awkward, though. Yeah, but it does. <laughs> what? Oh, no. That's not the conversation of today. It is what's up as one of God overcoming the world. So let's just skip. Let's just skip the devil over there. Okay, so. <laughs> <laughs> so, 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 my God. Gee. Okay, I have to skip. I really yes, Pastor Evelyn, he said not your husband. <laughs> no. Hallelujah. Oh, Listen, it goodness. is the guy who goes and opens the door at night when there is a knock. Right. What no. you sleeping for and sending her and he outside said, oh, to honey, open the honey, door? Honey, there's someone at the door. You go check. You go check. No, th this is the advanced time. This is the advanced time. This one, he's awake when he's saying that to you. It means he's running away from something. I'm talking about this other one where he's like, hmm, I want to sleep. Could you, could you just go check who is on this <laughs> God help you. Hands need to be laid on you. Something is wrong with that picture. No, the, 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 the sense of the presence of a male figure in the house is that of authority. Yes. yes. Is that of leadership. Yes. Right? It's that of, of protection, yes. provision, and, and we can go on and on. That's the reason why we are so excited about protectors of the realm. That's right. You know, when we are talking about protectors of the realm, my guys, you know, the uh -huh. come, come on, men of God, you know, yeah. men of David. Because huh? yeah, we, are, we, are we are protectors of, of the, the realm. realm. We protect the ladies, we protect the kids, right? We protect the neighborhood. We are not the ones who take the guns and go out and Scared do stuff. Scared of needles, though, <laughs> and guns. <laughs> Okay, all right, that's it. That's it. <laughs> Praise the Lord. That's for the men that are scared of needles. <laughs> yeah, you know, we have no business being scared of needles. Amen, amen, amen. So, yes. There are a lot of funny videos out there about how men are scared of needles. <laughs> well, <laughs> Especially not, in this pandemic. I'm not sure what that is all about. <laughs> to, to take the vaccine is a problem. No, 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 they no, see no. that needle and it just collapses. You know, the Bible says this, Pastor Pauline. It says, men ought to dwell. That, that word dwell is key. Yes. Men ought to dwell with women from a place of wisdom, <laughs> from a place of understanding. Mm -hmm. That they are the weaker vessel. Mm -hmm. Now, the word weaker there isn't talking about uh, um, uh, miniature muscles. No, right. it's not about uh, um, um, d diminished in strength. No. A woman can be a manager and a man is following. That's not the point. Mm -hmm. The point here is understanding that the, 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 the placement of God for a woman is that of side under. Mm -hmm. 
side Treat under. Treat them with a certain level of you know? delicateness. So, so usually when, when people talk about like that. right, <laughs> when when people talk about uh, a woman coming out of the rib of the man, mm -hmm. and 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 saying that she came from the rib so she can be on the side it is not just side as in equal but it is side and under because side under your arm yes. so there should be some level of protection, protection. And, and, yes. and provision and all of that that yes. comes with with that prophetic symbol that god you know put together in, in in bringing the woman forth but hey we bless the lord for he is faithful back to the book of james oh thank you pastor neddy you see your daughter is doing an amazing job what's she doing person what are you doing putting some scriptures to the things you're saying oh okay sister that's neat all right go pastor neddy praise the lord <laughs> hallelujah so 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 it becomes a thing you know when we when we are bringing balance between the the man that god has placed in a leadership position and, and the woman that God has placed in a helper's position. Mm -hmm. um, when you begin to find women who nurture a man who has refused to be a man mm -hmm. and call it love, it is an abuse to God's integrity. Yeah. And I don't want to get into that tonight. We'll, we'll have the conversation at a later time. Okay, so Hallelujah. we should just let it slide. Yes, I'm just going to give that one right there. It's the bomb. Okay. Boom. <laughs> you take right. it. Swallow it. Okay, moving <laughs> forward. Good. Moving forward. So, so Pastor Amen. Pauline, so here it is. James has had this conversation of bringing balance to a bunch of, of things throughout the entire word of God. Like he just squeezes things in five chapters. I'm telling you, it's amazing. And, 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 and it's like five is a number for grace. <laughs> I know somebody's going to say that. You know, but five is a number for grace. And then he just squeezed it right there and he talks about this. This Beautiful. is absolutely amazing so we come to james chapter 5 which is where we are going to mm -hmm. can you imagine this is you know all of this has been preamble yes all of this is preamble ha pastor cynthia where are you sister <laughs> so this is this is powerful what what god is 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 revealing and releasing to us right mm -hmm. now he starts here and says verse 13 is any among you afflicted let him pray mm -hmm. are you afflicted pray pray pastor pauline so he is saying to us yes ma'am i can see you so he's saying to, to all of us affliction is a call to prayer the afflicted are meant to call upon god because affliction suggests the need to increase the flames at your altar. Hmm. So when there is affliction, we go into the prayer closet. Yes. When there is affliction, we go into the prayer closet. When there is affliction, we go and say, I need to outgrow this wickedness. Yes. So when you go into your place of prayer, and you are praying in the Holy Ghost, as you are praying in the Holy Ghost, the fire is building. That's and, right. And there will be a time that yoke would be, my It will God, be broken. Destroyed. Destroyed by the reason of the anointing. Hallelujah. You become so slippery that darkness can't hold you. Yes. That's the benefit of coming into that in place. So if you are Jesus. afflicted, you know someone is going to say, I don't know. Okay, so by the way, what is an affliction? An affliction is a torment. Mm-hmm. That is um, cast upon a person to erode from them, number one, boldness. Mm -hmm. Number two, the sense of their sonship. Mm -hmm. Number one, boldness. Number two, a sense, sense of, their, of sonship. their sonship. This is the purpose of affliction, child of God. When someone is afflicted and they have been under that, um, um, bombardment. So afflictions uh, fall, let me say, let me put it this way. Afflictions fall in the category of battles of attrition. Mm -hmm. These are battles that are carried out by um, constricting demonic spirits. So the symbol of such demonic spirits will be like, like the, say, a boa constrictor. Mm -hmm. 
a boa constrictor. These are demonic spirits that will come around the person uh, with pain, mm -hmm. with uh, maybe a struggle with their finances, mm -hmm. and then just squeeze the life out I'm of that done. person. And the Bible talks about broken bones. It talks about a, a time in which someone feels as if they don't want to rise up. Mm -hmm. You know when the word of God says in the book of Isaiah, rise, shine. Mm -hmm. It is a deliverance from the spirit of affliction. Mm -hmm. And so we ought to understand that. So just consider for, 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 for once what it looks like if there is a serpentine spirit wrapped all around you. Now take note, serpents are like that. If you have dreams and those dreams reveal uh, um, 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 reptilia activities in your life. So when I talk about reptilia, it's the, in the animal kingdom, the class of the reptiles right if you find reptilian activities in your in your dreams mm -hmm. then you know there is some kind of constricting thing happening in your life yes. it is the same terminology that the word of god uses when 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 it describes the plight of the the, the non tither mm -hmm. in in the book of malachi you know it says the devourer so mm -hmm. th this thing just comes in and feeds and feeds and feeds and feeds it is a constrictor mm -hmm. It is a constrictor. So what happens when the constrictor is squeezing life out of you? It is intending to squeeze your bones. It is intending to squeeze your structure. Like a serpent that wraps, right? wraps itself. It, it wants to squeeze person. your structure. So you might be thinking, I have structure at work. And you start finding things are just falling left and right. And you're thinking, yeah. what is going on with me? I was, uh, what is going on here? I had uh, um, a good relationship over here. And all of a sudden, the relationship is crumbling. Mm -hmm. um, I, I had this good thing happening. All of a sudden, I, some, something is wrong. Right. Something right. is wrong. And, and that is why the, the, the presence of affliction is a call to prayer. Right. So when this squeezing is going on, you have to retreat. And go into your prayer closet and you begin to do that kurumashandizing. Come I don't know whether you understand That's what right. I am saying. You begin to kurumashandize. <laughs> you don't want to talk to people. I mean, I mean, you go into a private place and you're like, Rabba shoto, robo shata, rabba, ba, 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 ba. Yes. Now, now, the Bible clearly tells us in the, in the case of Hannah, Samuel's mom, that Penina was, was, was uh, mm. um, um, tormenting her. But that was a constricting spirit. Yeah. Irrespective of how much offering she had, how much love the husband loved her, mm. it meant nothing because she was under fire. Yeah. She was under pressure. Mm. And she had to go into the house of God and break that thing by outgrowing it. Yes. The Bible talks about all prayer, all supplication, right? Mm -hmm. Be made because it, those who don't need deliverance can easily fall prey to, 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 to demonic constrictions. Yes. That is the reason why when, when people don't fully understand this, they think deliverance is something that is only meant for the unbeliever. Yeah. Because they are thinking in terms of demonic possession. Mm -hmm. But you could not be possessed because you're born again. Yeah. But you could be heavily oppressed. Heavily oppressed yeah. And you still need deliverance because yeah. you need to be able to break that thing off yeah. of you. That Hallelujah. constriction needs to be broken off. Sometimes prayerlessness is is the 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 the, the effect of, uh, of of a constricting spirit, yes. uh, an oppressive spirit. Yes. Uh, there are people who have set prayer schedules, and sleep will not let them alone mm -hmm. because something is casting sleep over On you. Them. Yes. You know, so you have to understand this. So James begins to say these things: Is any among you afflicted? Let him pray. So, so, so when we are talking about afflicted again, we are talking about ill plight. Mm -hmm. Ill plight. We are talking about distress. We are talking about someone who is suffering hardship. I know I am working, but I don't know why I can't see the money. Right. Oh, 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 oh. Yeah. we need to come against yeah, that thing, child of God. Up. Something is off. Right? Something is or off. the moment your paycheck comes in, then some kind of trouble shows up. Yeah. And you know you are a tither. Yeah. The devourer has no business stealing yeah. from you. Mm -mm. And yet it's like there's something that's just waiting for the paycheck week. Right. 
and then there is some some ridiculous problem that shows up for which you have to spend the money yeah and it keeps happening over and over and over again yeah some people experience constriction or affliction in 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 forms of ill health yes now let me say something the word to afflict technically from the from from the word of god is is a, is a form of oppression that's different from sickness because sickness falls in the class of infirmity, mm -hmm. you know, where you have the word, in, you know, uh, um, uh, um, infirmary, yeah, you know, something that can be medically justified. Yeah, but when you don't have any kind of medication working on your case, child of God, mm. you've got to know something is wrong, and you have to take authority over that thing in your prayer closet. In your prayer closet, there are people who have problems with their eyes. And it's something that's constricting them. Yes. It is an affliction. Hallelujah. It's an affliction. You know, Jesus healed a woman and said, you want this woman to remain bound. Hmm. Who is a daughter of Abraham. Abraham. And, and that's what we are talking about. Yes. You see, she was known as the woman who was bent over oh, for 18, 18 years. years. The oppression began to reflect on her body. Mm -hmm. My God. The thing that held that woman. Let me tell you something. If God opens your eyes in the spirit to begin to see mm. how demonic spirits take hold of a person's life mm. and frustrate that person, you will be amazed. And I'm, I'm telling you, your behavior will change. And, and that's the reason why he says here, is, is, is any among you afflicted let him pray is any merry let him sing let him sing psalms is any sick among you let him call for the elders of the church let him call for the elders of the church let him call for the elders of the church so god is saying to us there are certain things that will happen to you and when they do you have to look for the elders. Mm -hmm. Someone who is more than you. Mm -hmm. Someone whose walk of faith is evidently in a better place than where you are right yeah. now. Yeah. So, so this is not about, uh, no, it's not just about who is higher. But it is also about who is not sick as I am sick. Right. Right. So you call for the elders and the Bible begins to mention the things that these people ought to do, the role they're supposed to pray, to do rather, when you call upon them. Right. Is any among you sick? Because there's a kind of, there's a kind of oppression Ooh, that you can break off of yourself. Yes. As you pray in the Holy Ghost, like we're talking about affliction. Yes. There's a place where sickness hits someone's body. Yes. And they don't even have the energy. <laughs> to say, by the stripes of Jesus, I'm healed. Yeah. It is a struggle. Mm -hmm. Then you know you need external help. You know you have to call for someone that is outside of you to do the praying yeah. until you can come to a place where now you too can at least say amen. Yeah. And then you, you like, like if your car breaks down by the side of the road, you need someone to come and attach their jumpstart cable to your engine to jumpstart your car right. you know so that is an aspect of the word of god and i'm so glad that god makes provision for that amen amen so amen. child of god if you are found in that situation make use of the provision that is in scripture and, for and, that and, and Pastor Pauline, this is the reason why we must belong to a household of faith yes don't 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 let the mm. devil take this right over you that cannot and be tell you that you shouldn't yeah. have a pastor you know it's yeah. pointless pastors are not doing what they are supposed to do they said they were going to be god genius and now they are failing no pastor ever said he's going to be god genius <laughs> i don't know where you got that from right pastors if you are a pastor this is a, a position or a manifestation of god's grace upon your life while you grow mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. this this is this is very important for us yes. to understand 
If you are an evangelist, it is the hand of grace upon your life. So you would manifest the grace of God while you are growing alongside everyone else. Yes. So in, in the real sense, no pastor has arrived. It is not a ticket to indicate that you have arrived. It's no. not a validation ticket. No. no. <laughs> and, and, and this is where a lot of powerful, uh, um, um, uh, shall I say, powerfully graced children of God have come into trouble because the grace upon their lives has been interpreted as them not needing anything. Right. But God has, uh, has uh, arranged the body of Christ in such a way that no one shall, uh, uh, shall be termed forsaken. And right? no one will be self-sufficient. No one will be self-sufficient. We will need each other because yes. we are many members. Amen. And forming one body. You yeah. know? So you will need the other person at some point. God made sure of that. Yeah. Wow. So, 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 my God, may God help us. Amen. Seriously speaking. Because these two words we have highlight, highlighted tonight, one of them being sickness, uh, uh, um, um, uh, um, um, under the tutelage, I should say, of the spirit of infirmity mm -hmm. and, and affliction, affliction, which is the, 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 the result of of uh, um, um, constricting spirits. These things do happen to children of God. Yeah. Paul had to at one time say, pray for the wicked people who are against my ministry. Mm -hmm. Child of God, listen. <laughs> Support your brother. Stand with your sister. Because the devil ain't playing. At some point, Paul had had it. He had to call <laughs> some of them by name. Yeah. And said, Alexander, Alexander the Copper has done me much God. evil. May God repay him. <laughs> He had, uh, he had, had it. Yeah. <laughs> like, okay, that's enough. <laughs> Hallelujah. So, so, so this is vital. And, 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 and sometimes what the enemy does is, is sow a seed of superiority yes. in, in, in a person. And, and Pastor Pauline, it's not just superiority. For some, superiority works. For others, it's just a spirit of inferiority. Yes. How can I go? Look at them. They are very busy. You see, they are high priests. They are higher than everyone else. So how am I going to go to what is high? You know, go to what is high. That's what you need right now. That's what, if you, that's need. what you need. That's what, if, that was, is, if that's what you need, yeah. then that's what you should go for. There is right. a reason why God created a system of order and accountability. Yeah. It's for our good. There will always be lesser and higher persons than Come yourself. On. So you have to get comfortable with that truth. There's absolutely nothing you can do about it. Mm -hmm. You know, get comfortable, comfortable with that truth yeah. and let that truth work for you. Yeah. 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 There is a reason why things are the way they are. Mm -hmm. They are meant to serve us yes. for good. Yes. But if you don't follow the, the, the right channel on how to handle those things that are there, mm -hmm. then you are termed a transgressor. And scripture says the way of the transgressor is hard. Yeah. Oh, oh. <sighs> the way of the transgressor. Okay. So, <laughs> well, 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 well. Back to James chapter 5. So, here we go. Mm -hmm. So, let's, let's have this conversation. Again, let me break down these two words. The first one being affliction. In the Greek, uh, um, um, the word there is kakopethia. That word speaks of... Kako who? <laughs> Kako you, are, you all don't want to hear it again. <laughs> Kako petia. Kako petia. How do you spell that? Kako petia. It is K-O-K... Sorry, K-A-K-O P-A and then T-H-E-I-A. So, so you can write that. Okay. okay. But it's very different from Astenia. Mm -hmm. So asthenia is or, or speaks of being weak, being feeble, being sick. Mm -hmm. That is what that speaks about. Right. And in one of the places in the Word of God, Paul actually speaks of of this as as something that you know happened to him. But then Epaphroditus, you know, ministered to him. But isn't that interesting that Epaphroditus uh, Epaphroditus's ministration to Paul in the area of finances? Took care of body weakness. I don't know if we... My God, my God, my God. Ha! 
Hey, Rabakasa. Listen, your, there are times when body weakness is because you're broke. Okay? Hey. <laughs> okay. Okay. I am telling you. You look at all is... the bills and the things you need to do, and there's more month than money. Yeah. And your whole body just goes weak. You don't even want to get up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, so, so we must understand ah. the value of these things. They are powerful. Sometimes, guys, I am telling you, you cook a great meal and go give your man of God. He begins to smile. And then things the, the grace comes to prophesy yeah. on you, eh? <laughs> <laughs> you know, because, because, I mean, Pastor Pauline, those things have happened even in the word of God. When, yes. when, 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 when we heard the story of Jacob and Esau, right? Jacob prepared a, an amazing meal <laughs> and took to his father. And then, and then his father, who you know, he rose up, a, a different person. To, it to was his wife place. that cooked that food. I know. It <laughs> was tasty. <laughs> <laughs> hallelujah, hallelujah. Well, the Lord God is faithful, right? <laughs> worthy, 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 worthy of all praise. So, yes. there we go. Um, wow. um, Thank if, you, if, if the Bible says this, it says, is, is any among you sick? Let him call, right? Mm -hmm. For the elders of the church. Now, why is it important? Pastor Pauline, Pastor Pauline. You know, you know what just done? Sometimes you just need to get a cane. Just weep like someone like three times so they can come to their senses. Child of God, stop being so high-minded that you're waiting for your pastor to be the one to call you. You have to put a disclaimer on this video. He is not suggesting that you go get a cane and weep people. Yeah, but it kind of looks like that. <laughs> because, Pastor Bonnie, this is the point. It says... Is any among you sick? Let him call for the elders. Mm -hmm. we, we, in, 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 in many churches today, there is an air of superiority okay. that is disguised as the need for what is superior to attend to you. Meanwhile, the truth about it is that it's what they call reverse psychology. Okay, I am supposed to look for my pastor. If my pastor is the one looking for me, I mean, it doesn't matter if you say, well, the, the shepherd looks for the sheep. L listen, stop saying some things that you really do. They are just out of place. What and do you mean by the shepherd? He, the, le he left the 99 in search of the one. So you're contented. But the one was sheep, though. No, no, no. no, no. <laughs> no this, this sheep is contented that, that they are lost. That, yeah, they it, want to profess that they are lost so that the shepherd will come and look yes. for them. That, that's, the, that's what will make them feel extra special. Listen to the example you are giving. Listen to that. <laughs> But anyway, the, the pattern is this. You call. I remember the day I was wondering what was happening to me. And, and, and I was expecting my pastor to come and pray for me. That day I couldn't walk. I wasn't able to walk. I was in a very bad shape. Right? And, and so you had actually gone up, you know, so my pastor could. I don't know what we were expecting that she was going to do. And then my pastor I was thinking she was going to come down to the section. Yeah, and then it my doesn't even said, sound right saying calm down. Right? Yeah, it's just off. I, that's what I'm saying. I'm not sure what, what <laughs> at the expecting. time. My pastor at just the time, said, the point is you you couldn't walk. You you yeah, I know. So I was like, okay, just lay down here. I'm gonna go let mom know, and then hopefully come with her, right? Yeah, yeah maybe maybe she was just supposed to speak a word from where she was, and and everything would be okay. But that's not what happened. I'm not sure what we're expecting. <laughs> the point here is, she said, go ask him to come. Right, and then you check it. Hey, sister, you're, you're very humble. She came and then she said, you know, mom said you should come. I said, but... Hey. Did you tell her that I couldn't walk? I said, I did. And she said, that's a more reason why you should come. And then when, when mom sent that word, that's the more reason why you should come. I just said, hey. Mm. I carry myself. You, you might as well say I got healed. I mean, if mom <laughs> says you should come, you are not thinking mm -hmm. my body, my this, my wee, 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 wee. You come. You come, you walk on the word. Yeah, you walk on the word and you come and that is what happened. And Pastor Peter, this thing you just said right now, the key to experiencing that is a decision in every child of God in regards to where they position their pastors in their hearts. The value. The value, the honor level. You have to settle, this is the person I have chosen that I will honor. This person is a pastor over me. I have settled, I will honor them. And what that means is honor will be seen in my disposition. It will be seen in my bank account. It will be heard in my tone. 
it will be seen in the way I carry the speed with which I act on what they say. Pastor Pauline, I learned something from the Holy Ghost that I would love to share okay. about value. So God is teaching me about value. He doesn't use the word value. He uses another word. So he says to me, value, val, value, val, value, val, value, val. Value, valve. I'm thinking, what is value, valve? I said, what is this? He says, if you value something, then you have given it valves. So substance can flow to you. So substance can flow to you. So in what areas do you value? Those are the areas in which substance Those are will flow. the areas where substance will flow onto you. So when, you, when, when Jesus says to you, rise up and walk, if you value Jesus to have what it takes to say to you, rise up and walk, the, 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 your response will, will turn on the vows. Yes. And guess what? Pop, you will rise up and walk. Yes. And yes. I said, Jesus. Hallelujah. My God. That's... That is how God began to teach me. He said, never honor people because of the good they have presented. Honor them because they are honorable. Period. That's it. And so even, quote unquote, what isn't what's honoring. Pastor Peter, I honor. Amen. I honor. I, I honor a child. I honor a thief. Yes. I, it doesn't matter because... If they are a thief, they are a thief in one area of their life. I remember my teacher mm. told me as clearly as night and day, you can learn from a fool. From a fool. I said, what? How can you learn from a fool? I still remember waking mm -hmm. up and asking that question. Sir, how can you learn from a fool? <laughs> he said, he's a fool in the areas in which he's foolish. But he may be wise in the area where you need him. So you never can tell. You know, we have an, a proverb where I come from. Yes, ma'am. And it goes like this. The barber that is ignored in the village is the one that kills the chief. You know, the barber is almost insignificant. Yeah. You only n need him like maybe once every two weeks for those who are meticulous with their hair. Or once a month for those who are not so meticulous. Mm -hmm. And it's not a big deal. He's just the barber, right? And when you are talking about people who are valuable in the palace, where in the chieftaincy, like they refer to it, mm -hmm. you will not consider the barber. So if the barber comes in to cut the chief's hair, people are really busy doing their stuff. Nobody, if, if another dignitary or uh, an arch enemy to the chief is coming, then everybody is on their toes and on their watch and on their guard. But if the barber is coming to cut the chief's hair, it's like, oh, it's just a barber, and everybody goes about their business. And he's already coming with things to cut. And he's coming with things to cut. <laughs> he will kill the chief before you can even say Jack Robinson. Oh, no. So those are some of the things. You, we have to be careful how we ignore people as if they are insignificant. Because there is no human being that is completely insignificant useless. or completely useless. Mm. My God, my God, yeah. my God. But, 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 but when God taught me that lesson, that lesson, it shifted everything in my being. Mm -hmm. In my life today, Pastor Colin, in my life today, there are people who handle major areas of my life who, if not of the grace of God, <laughs> they can turn my life to dust in a second. And anyone who has attained any kind of height knows this thing I'm talking about. Yes. So, so, so they don't joke with their driver. Mm -hmm. They don't joke, joke with their hairdresser. Yes. They don't joke with whoever cooks for them. Mm -hmm. You know, if you're one of those kind of people who has mm -hmm. someone who cooks for them, mm -hmm. right? They don't, they don't joke because you never yeah. know. You never yeah. can tell. Never. You never can tell. So ladies and gentlemen, that's one way of you knowing that you ought to keep very significant people around your life. Yeah. Your life is as valuable, as significant, shall I say, as the people you put around you. Your accountant. They all give yeah. you books. Mm. 
It just needs a few wrong numbers and you are gone. <laughs> you are gone. All right, so here we are. Honor is very important. Yes. If you honor someone, you have, without knowing, without planning for it, you have placed vows in that person's life and resources. And on a day unknown, unknown to you, mm -hmm. you can place a demand. Oh, yes. Right? Oh. Stuff can flow to you. Favor can come to you that you never saw coming. Yes. But that is what God does. My God. That is what God does. Hallelujah. Oh, my God. Hallelujah. So, okay. So, so it so, says call for the elders. Call for the elders. You must have call some level elders. of reverence. Yes. Yes. You know, Pastor Pauline, I, I, I want to use this opportunity to talk about the resident pastor of House of Restoration. Mm. Oh, wow. You know, the other day I thought about something and I said, clearly I can see why you're the resident pastor. <laughs> there, was a, there was someone who had approached her, another pastor, and this, this is something that, that has happened twice where two pastors approached her on different occasions mm -hmm. to tell her that they have someone in their congregation that they would want for her to consider for marriage. <laughs> and then they told her that, you know, it's so-and-so, but, but we are going to see your pastors so we can have this conversation. And, and then she, I remember in, in both, both occasions, she, she, she tapped the people, she said, um, you don't need to go to my pastors. The answer is no. <laughs> God did not tell me that. I'm not taking that. But Pastor Pauline, yeah. when you have such a resident pastor, you kill it dead. <laughs> she, 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 she reflected right there, right there on the spot, what it means for you to have a child who will respond to the enemy at the gate. At the gate. But you flip this other side. You have children who say, wait, come. I'm going to take you to my daddy so that he can answer. Mm -hmm. So you have children who bring the enemy into the living room. Mm -hmm. And they even show it, the bedroom is over there. Go yeah, like this and they make a left. And, 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 and so on and so forth. <laughs> and they actually coax it, uh, like... The coach. They coach the person on what to say. Yeah, how Be to say it. How to say so it. So that... <laughs> you know... My God. I mean... Let me just leave it alone. Pastor Sheila is a blessing like that. She is an amazing woman of God. I mean... Uh, uh, it's, it's, it's just something. But, but, but God is particular. You know, God is particular. You, you, you have to know how honor calls you, summons you to preserve what gives you life. Yeah. So let me explain. Oh, my let God. Let me explain. Let me explain. Yes, please. There aren't many Peters in this world. Jesus said to Peter, I need for you to spend time praying mm -hmm. because I am going to be attacked. And if all principles are in place, hey, Christine, God bless you, woman of God. You're welcome. Um, if everything is in order, when I'm attacked, I know you would respond. Because as a child, you will respond to the enemy at the gate. Mm -hmm. And Peter took a sword. When, when Jesus was attacked, he pulled out the sword and cut someone's ear. Mm -hmm. Jesus had to say, no, 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 no. This is not how we fight it. <laughs> this is not how we fight it. This is not a right answer. As a child of the house, you must know how to pick your sword. Listen, cut the ear and let and then we'll put and it, then back we'll it back. <laughs> but you should have responded to the enemy at the gate. That's right. Right? That's the reason why, as a child of the house, you cannot be able as, a, as an orphan at the same time. Right. I am telling you, I honor this woman of God. You Me know, too. Pastor Sheila, I, I, I honor her as a, as a woman of God. She is. But you see, that is what honor does, right? Yes. Now, that's someone who's lower. But honoring her has opened up valves of sustenance. Yes. Coming from strange places. Yes. Because you don't see it coming. Yes. And she'll just jump in there and do something, and you're like, eat. And sometimes she jump, she does it with such, <laughs> such violence, <laughs> right? And then she, she comes and says, "Daddy, let me just report myself." Yeah, <laughs> she says, "Let me just report myself." My, I mean, my point is this, right? It is better to have a child who is going to slice the enemy's throat and then come and ask, "How else could she have sliced?" 
the enemy's throat, but the, the throat is slit <laughs> yes. already. And then we can talk about the rest when we get home on how things can be adjusted, you know. And, uh, you know, God is good. God is good. But yes, is any among you sick? Let him call for the elders. Value is a piece of this equation. Yes. Ooh, it's a this piece is so of this good. equation. Value, valve. Yeah, value, valve. So always remember that. Value, valve. Value, valve. Value, valve. By the time, <laughs> and that is what the book of Proverbs talks about in, 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 in a few places here and there. By the time a woman begins to lift her husband up, or any other male presence in her life, the male person turns to look for, what can I do? What can I do? Yes. What can I do? How do you think John the Baptist's head went? John the Baptist's head left his shoulders <laughs> because someone was dancing. Yes. There is no telling, you know, she she just opened vows. Okay, what do you want? What do you want? Onto the half of my oh, kingdom. Onto the half of my kingdom. Seriously. I don't know if I'm going to give someone onto the half of my kingdom. I'm just saying. <laughs> I'm a little too focused to give you half of my kingdom. But that that's that's just God help us. Oh, dance moves. Dance moves. <laughs> I, I, well, I can see that, but not the half of my kingdom. Anyway, but is any among you sick? Let him call for the elders of the church. So let's establish one thing right here. Please be the one to call. Yes. That's what all of this conversation here has been about. Be the one to call. Be the one to call. And when you make that call, Oh, Rekabasata. There is no telling what could happen. I mean, and Tolu is laughing. But you remember when we, we, we went to, to, to the church in Philly mm -hmm. and ministered? I saw how uh, um, um, these ladies came. It was all in the open. People were getting into their vehicles. Some people came outside. Oh, yes. yes. You know, people were walking on the streets. Cars were passing. They didn't they, care. They did not care. They came and knelt down. They said, please, yes. bless yes. us yes. before you leave. Bless us before you Bless us before you leave. And I was like... And they're talking like that. They already went down on their knees. There's... It, 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 right around you. It, it, there's no way you could have gone... You couldn't go any other way. I, I but, was like... Pray father, and bless them. Oh, Father. <laughs> and, 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 and of course, Come because the valley, they take positioned it by force. <laughs> themselves and put value. Yes. So their value was reflecting. They didn't care about who was around. They didn't care about what they were wearing. Mm -hmm. Oh, they, yeah, that's true. They were wearing all white. They were yes. wearing all white yes. on that day. They didn't yes. care about what they were wearing. They went down on their knees. And by the time these two went down on their knees, a bunch of others came mm -hmm. boop, boop, from all different angles. And I remember one of, you know, the, the pastors under us. I don't know for what reason on that day, I, I didn't lace my shoes. When I came out of the truck, we were ministering at their church on that day. When I came out of the truck, she ran and came and said, sir, please, let me do your shoes. And I'm thinking, no, <laughs> nobody does my shoes. You know, and she said, please, sir, please. And she's saying, please, she's not up here saying, please, no, waiting for you to sit. Down no, she shoes. said, please, her fingers are going down and, and, and about shoes. to lace the shoes. And I said, Father, in the same way. Listen, guys, honor opens the way for things you cannot even begin to imagine. Mm -hmm. yeah. While people were looking at Eli as an ineffective priest, there was one Hannah. Who took the words of Eli? Yeah. Same time next year, baby Samuel came. So go in peace. Father, may you help us. May you help us. May you help us in the name of Jesus. That's the reason why I don't understand why we or anyone would call a minister omitting whatever office it is that they represent. If someone comes to me, uh, I mean, one of the youngest people in our ministry uh, um, um, calls herself Prophetess Mailani. I have never asked her, what is the source of your prophetic ministry? What does that got to do with me? If she calls herself Prophetess Mailani, there is something in there that's worth honoring. Yes. So I am going to go to that woman of God 
and say, Prophet is my lani. What has that done? Hmm. What has that done? And I, and I have to talk about this. I have to talk about this. Yes, sir. I have to talk about this. I have to talk mm -hmm. about this. One of those days, we were at uh, um, the catapult. And I was ministering that day. Mm -hmm. And I'm doing my best to sing. And prayer it wasn't summit. coming out. That prayer, was a prayer, prayer summit. summit. Prayer summit. Thank you. I said, <laughs> where is Prophet Ismailani? In fact, if I hadn't honored that vessel before that day, before that day, the Holy Spirit would not have said, right now she has the key to unlock Listen, the stop trying to feed your chicken on the day you're taking it to the market. Oh okay? my God. <laughs> Le Rabasata. <laughs> on that day, the Holy Ghost said to me, get my lani. Mm -hmm. I said, okay. I said, where is Prophet is my lani? Because sometimes the Holy Ghost will also test you on how you would address it. Yeah. By the time I called her and I gave her that microphone, and she began to move to and fro. Hmm. That, that woman of God shifted that atmosphere. She okay. shifted that atmosphere. <laughs> I mean, you may be thinking I'm talking about someone who's 15. Woo. No, she's not 15. Oh, yet. Hi, mom, welcome. <laughs> but she will be 15 someday, right? She will be 15 someday. And that's besides the point. Right. Because. I am not stagnant in my age, so it's not like when she gets to 15, then at <laughs> then, some point then she will catch up with me, and then maybe she will pass, and then, and then I will say, yeah, okay, yeah, now, now I can, now I can respect you. And, can, can, the, amen. Did you see in the word of God that I will pour out of my spirit upon all flesh? Sons and daughters, the elderly as well as the young, so right there, God just went and, and destroyed the concept of age. Yes, There's right. no age in this business. Yes, in right. fact, Pastor Pauline. See, we, everybody that was present we, for the prayer summit is saying, sure, she, she, she did, did. Right? That's right. And, and <laughs> that's did. the reason why from the day God began to speak to me about the, the, the works of the Holy Spirit, the mm -hmm. power of the outpouring, I have never cared about someone's age. Oh, I don't no. ask. It, mm -hmm. it is of no consequence. Right. Oh, so, so how old so are how you? how old are what, you? What do I care? If he doesn't care, I don't care. I remember we went somewhere else like that and they had Pastor Sheila lead in prayer. After she was done, somebody walked up to her. You look so young. Hmm. You led prayer powerfully. How old are you? She just looked at this lady and said, old enough. That's right. <laughs> I'm telling you, this child, this one, she answers the enemy at the gate. You need to rest. This one, she enough. will, I told you, she will cut the head of that snake before she says, how should I have cut it? But the head is sleep, sleep. Hallelujah. But we bless the Lord for his faithfulness, right? Yeah. Bless the Lord for his faithfulness. And this is what God is saying to us. Let them call. And so when I honored what was found or what is found mm -hmm. in, in Prophet Ismailani, she's the youngest in the school of ministry right yes. now. Yes. And she came forward and she began to move to and fro. Ooh. Blood of Jesus. <laughs> By the time she was done, I had a voice. <laughs> oh, I had a voice. Person, I had a voice. 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 Now, you can imagine, these are things that God. Because you don't know where favor will come from. Mm -hmm. You never know where favor will come from. Mm -hmm. You never know where breakthrough will come from. Oh, it you was never phenomenal know. that night. Yeah. You never know. Yeah. And God has done that in our children. Where they... they in fact, who is, who is going to laugh with them? And let me just put it like that. Who is going to laugh with them? <laughs> By the time you, you receive a rebuke from the Holy Ghost, you will be positioned aright. Yes. The truth about it is that we also have people who are just not caring. Right. Children as well as adults. Mm -hmm. But you find how people are positioning themselves on a daily basis and making a difference in the kingdom of God. That's right. So please, don't, don't, don't stay back. God is looking Amen. for that which he placed Amen. within you. The Bible says you've got to take hold 
the, you know, of that which God took, took hold, hold of, you, of you, right? So that's important. So call for the elders. So guys, don't wait for your pastor to come after you. You go to your pastor because when you do that, you would have positioned yourself for the oil to flow down to you. Amen. So that's the first thing. Let him call for the elders of the church. Hallelujah. Number two, let them pray over him. Amen. Over let them pray him. over him. And, and so there is nothing wrong in having two, three people pray over you. Okay. Let them, let them pray, pray over, over him. him. Let them, the next thing, anoint him with oil in the name, in the of, name the of the Lord. Lord. And then the Bible says, the prayer Pray of faith. faith. The prayer of faith. So, whatsoever is born of God, overcometh the world, and this is the victory that overcometh the world, even, even our, our faith, faith, right? Yes. But you see how there is a strategy right here on how we are supposed to overcome when it comes to this. Powerfully. Yes. The strategy right here is, number one, you make the call. Mm -hmm. Number two, when you make that call, let them... Pray, pray over, over you. you. So you permit them pray over you. You permit them pray over you. Right? Yes. Put aside your attitude. Put aside anything else. Let them pray for you. Right? Next thing. Let them anoint you with oil in the name of okay. the Lord. And the prayer of faith shall save the sick. The sick. Oh, hallelujah. Mm -hmm. The prayer of faith shall save the sick. And the Bible says, and the Lord will raise him up. And now we have a semicolon. Mm -hmm. The semicolon says, and if he have committed sins, they shall be forgiven him. They shall be forgiven him. So the Bible is saying, regardless of what the circumstance is, in case there is this, mm -hmm. God is also able to handle it. Yes. Amen. In case there is sin, mm -hmm. God is also able to handle it. Mm -hmm. In case there is sin, God is also able to handle it. Amen. In case there is sin, God is also able to handle it. Amen. In case there is sin, God is also able to handle it. Not, is, not only is he able, but he will. Yes, he will. When they pray over him and anoint him with oil, yes. God will. Yes. Pastor Pauline, I find it so intriguing so intriguing and 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 you know we we have been talking about transitioning from a servant to a son mm -hmm. i find it so intriguing that those who are sick go to jesus the need to be healed is meant to be greater than our concern for whatever went wrong oh yes so as ministers yes. of the towel ministries, we ought to look at someone who is in a place of ill health with the consciousness that whatever it is that they have done is not as valuable as the healing that was provided for them on the cross. That's right. That's right. So let's deal with the spirit of infirmity. Mm -hmm. Let's deal with every demonic spirit that brings about constriction, mm -hmm. right? Let's rebuke the power of darkness right. out of the house of God, yes. out of the child of God. Yes. Then we can talk about, in, in terms of remediating, right? Then we will talk about the remedy for whatever it is that we are supposed to be handling. But we must have... Uh, um, 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 a, a sense of grievance toward darkness. darkness. Oh no, yes. devil, you have no yes. place among the people of God. You pick your things and leave yes. right this minute in the name of Jesus Amen. and do not return. Amen. That should be the attitude yes. of a child of God, yes. irrespective of you know whatever it is that That's is going right. on. And you come in there telling yourself, it doesn't matter Ooh, what it is, their sins Jesus. are forgiven. Yes. Jesus spoke over the disciples and he said, Whosoever, whosoever sins you forgive shall be forgiven. That's why John So, so you come with, with that in mind. Yeah. 
as you come in respect to this scripture you're you're telling yourself even if there is any sin i forgive it so it's forgiven in the name of jesus because bless the lord oh my soul and forget not all his benefits my God, who my forgave God. our sins and healed our in, 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 our diseases so you 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 get rid of anything that the devil might want to use as leverage over the, the head of this child of god to say oh they are sick because oh no devil there is no because a curse without a cause cannot stand that's right so we take away the reason for which you can have legal grounds because we are anointed to do that. Mr. Pauline, you know, talking about Smith Wuguswa, I enjoyed this man of God on more than one occasion raising the dead. Someone who was all iced up. He took the body and put it against the wall mm -hmm. and said, you are going to live in the name of Jesus. Come back to life. You know, I love that kind of story, that kind of testimony, oh that kind of tenacity, because God is calling all of us, all of us in the body of Christ. God is calling us onto this tenacious, uh, um, um, grounded faith mm -hmm. where we say no to the devil, irrespective of what legal grounds with which he wants to afflict any of our brothers. Yeah, you take hold of the word of God and knock him off his so-called legality. Yeah. And it takes a knowledge of the word of God to be oh, able to yes. do that. Oh, yes. The prayer of faith. 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 The Bible says, it shall save the sick. Mm -hmm. What does this tell you? Someone who is in a place of sickness has been captured. Yes. And they need saving. Yes. They need to come out of the claws of darkness. And wherever you are tonight, tonight, right now, wherever you are listening to this broadcast right now, the deliverance power of God has been released and yes. it is time you, for every venture of darkness to come to naught. So in the name of Jesus, I want you to put your hand on the screen right now and we are going to release the healing power of God. As, as your hands touch our hands right now on the screen, receive the healing power of God. God. We rebuke the demonic spirit that is constricting your life, producing bad dreams, releasing torment in the name of Jesus. We command that thing to leave you now in Jesus' name. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Be healed now in Jesus' name. Amen. Every oppression leaves you now. Every oppression leaves you now. There is someone you're listening to us right now and you have a condition, a blood condition. You have a blood condition. I can see the blood condition through your 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 your, your veins. In the name of Jesus, I speak healing to your situation in the name of Jesus. You 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 have the tendency of having pains all over your body. This may be a sickle cell situation. I speak healing to it right now in the name of Jesus. And not just to you but anyone else with a blood condition be healed in Jesus name Amen. I don't know I heard the word genome yeah, I mean when someone has um, like you're talking about sickle cell oh. they, they have a, 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 um, a blood type the, the, the SS it, it, like they say sickle it causes their blood vessels normally a blood vessel is round but they are seem to be sickle like half a moon so it, 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 it reduces blood flow. Mm -hmm. it's, it's con if we can use the same word, constricts the blood flow. And when blood has to flow through those sickle blood vessels, it's painful because it's not a full blood vessel. So the genotype is SS. And we have had experiences where God has changed people's genotype. Okay. So that is a possibility okay. in God. Okay, so I just know I heard that word genome. And, and, and right now, in the name of Jesus, Amen. 
We are believing the Lord with you for a change in your blood type. In the name of Jesus, from the crowns of your head to the soles of your feet. Ah, this is interesting. He says, down to the marrow. Down to the marrow. Down to the production center. In the name of Jesus, let healing take effect right this minute in Jesus' name. Amen. In the name Amen. of Jesus. That's right. Blood cells are producing the bone marrow. So that's perfectly in order. Caraba soto romanda le que prende se tique. Father, in the name of Jesus, we come against any um, condition that has pushed any of your children, our brothers and sisters, to be feeding off of, 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 of pigs' food right now. In the name of Jesus, be delivered from this orphan spirit in Jesus' name. Amen. Branguenda la bragado zabi katalaba. Maje ki bonde saki delebre. Maruka sakata. Be healed in the name of Jesus. Amen. Be delivered in the name of Jesus. Amen. Be set free right now Amen. in the name of Jesus. Amen. There is someone, you are a woman and you're losing hair. You're losing hair and this is really strange because you're losing hair like from the middle of your head back here, you're losing hair. In the name of Jesus, we speak a restoration. Yes. Yeah, we speak a restoration right now in the name of Jesus. We curse the head of darkness that is causing this condition in the name of Jesus. Amen. Healing to you in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Yeah. Thank you, Lord. Healing to you in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Male so. Oh, there is someone's Lord. child. You gave birth to that child, and there is a condition in uh, something in the middle of that child's head. You know, usually when babies are born, you know, it takes some time for that portion to, you know, to be fully formed. Um, um, so even now, whatever it is that is troubling that child and that area of their life, we rebuke the hand of wickedness and we speak healing to that child right now in the name of Jesus. Amen. There is someone, you haven't discovered this, but God is going to heal you this very minute. Amen. There is a pain on your right leg. It is, it is happening to you like round, right around your calf. God is healing you right now in the name of Jesus. And I'm going to tell you what that is. He said there is a blood clot traveling down your leg. In the name of Jesus, we release the lightning of God to shatter this, this blood clot in the name of Jesus and let that pain go now in Jesus' name. Amen. Abdominal pain is being healed right now. In the name of Jesus, you, you actually have a pain right below your navel right below your navel. This very minute as we are speaking, you can feel the pain. Right now, in the name of Jesus, be healed. Just put your hand on that spot right now. Be healed in the name of Jesus. Go now in Jesus' name. Now hear the word of the Lord. No enchantment, no yes. divination no shall divination. prosper uh, against any child of God in the name of Jesus. Amen. So child of God, be at ease for the words that were spoken against you have just met with their terminus. Yes. And even this very minute, in the name of Jesus. Le bra bra gaza bra. that oh, arrow of I'm darkness has been shattered by the shield of faith. Amen. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Pastor Peter, I don't know if that's the same person you're talking about, but when you were talking about someone with a pain in their in their stomach, yes, I saw like someone around their belly button, yes, and it looks like something is traveling. It goes down and it comes up, so you feel like you have movements in your body. Aramana. It goes down, it comes up, it goes down, it comes up, and Aramana. so it literally feels like like the the feeling is the feeling of a, either a tapeworm or a serpent. Okay. You feel that yeah. wave like thing. It moves like that in waves. And even now, we release the healing power of God over you. In the name of Jesus, we curse that thing to die to its roots. In the name of Jesus, we rebuke that witchcraft spirit. In the name of Jesus, we declare you completely healed and made whole now. In Jesus' mighty name. Minister Ajibanda is asking for prayer for her nephew. Mm -hmm. 
who has autism. Thank you, Lord. In the name Thank you, Lord. of Jesus, we arrest that spirit of autism yes. right now. In you wicked spirit of, of infirmity, lose your grips from this child in the name of Jesus. Amen. We speak peace in the name Amen. of Jesus. Amen. Now, let yes. that condition change suddenly in Jesus' name. Amen. Child of God, believe there's no distance in the spirit. Anything can happen even now. God is being glorified in Jesus' name. Jesus. Thank you. Now, there is someone with a condition on your in left leg. Jesus. On your left leg. And, 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 and we are praying right now. I am getting information that is related to, to your nerve endings having issues. Now, I don't know if you have checked this. Uh, um, but there is a condition here that is connected to, to uh, your blood sugar levels. Prolonged diabetes. Prolonged diabetes. Your left leg, you're, you're, you're losing sensation in that leg. You're losing sensation. In the name of Jesus, we speak life to come into that leg right now in Jesus' name. Even in the spirit. Peace right now. Peace right now. Peace right now in the name of Jesus. Amen. Oh my God, Lord, let your name be glorified tonight in the name of Jesus. Donnie says it's neuropathy. Okay, yes. So we speak, we speak life into into those blood vessels right now, into those nerves right now. In, uh, um, um, in the name of Jesus, Amen. receive life now yes. in Jesus' name. And we speak a reversal of this condition. Yes. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. God is well able to so heal you that you will not even have to be on medications because there are certain disease conditions that are known to not have a cure. So you are just on medications for the management of it. What? Some of those chronic diseases like diabetes, there's really no cure for diabetes. So if they have you on all of these medications, they're just for management. So it's considered a chronic disease. Unless God intervenes, I understand that now naturopathic doctors are coming up with different um, treatments, mm -hmm. but most of that is still under research and stuff like that where they believe that it can reverse mm -hmm. diabetes. And medically speaking, at this point, they're constantly, it's like they just have you on different medications or they do diet modification just to manage the, 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 the sugar levels and situation someone who has gone to the the extreme part of it where now they're dealing with neuropathy mm -hmm. it's like if the diabetes has been uncontrolled for some time so yeah. we we believe in god that god heals yeah the doctors can cure they do what they do but god can heal yeah. so we're trusting god that he will not only stop the neuropathy from progressing right. but he can reverse that to the point oh, where you're completely oh, healed so from this in the name of jesus in the name of jesus thank you father god listen to me child of god as we are approaching the end of 2021 into 2022 i remember the lord had given us this word before even right here on this broadcast there is going to be a move of god that will be marked by great healings. Amen. You know, they talked about the healing movement years ago. But I am telling you, child of God, there is a healing movement that is coming like this world has not seen it. And many of you who are listening to me right now, you're listening to me, you're going to be part of this move of God. Amen. Where you would come, my God, and ascend the stage and just say, Jesus. Yes. And people will begin to be healed Amen. all over the place. Amen. I am telling you, child of Amen. God. This, this move of God that is happening right now, because there is a, a very powerful prophetic move of God throughout the nations. Throughout the nations, there's a consciousness of it, and it is happening. I, I want you to understand this. This move of God will not come to a close, so another one will come up. No. 
As this move of God is going, this prophetic move of God that is through the nations of the world, God will begin to usher also, as it were, simultaneously, a major move of healing. It will be so powerful. There will be, as it were, a combination, a accumulation of these different moves of God that have happened through the years. There will be a move of faith. There will be a move of the prophetic. There will be a move of healing. There will be a convergence of these things. And they shall come right, I mean, right there. It shall be there. There will be immense deliverance happening all over the place. In the name of Jesus, child of God, position yourself for the word of the Lord concerning you is definitely coming to pass. The word of God says the enemy knows he has but a short time, Mm. but God has something reserved. My God, the best is reserved for the last. Child of God, even that which seems unseemingly, God says I will use the nameless and faceless. So get ready, get ready, get ready. For God will use you in strange ways that you don't even know about. For God will use one to chase a thousand, but two shall chase ten thousand. There is a coming move of God, child of God. And in Emavikandala break it, Talabra. And it's time to enlist yourself in the name of Jesus. Haraba Shandala Brakata. Lebro soto lo kori mande libra bande seda. La kuriya maka soto. Remo shakira mo boso. It is going to be amazing. It is going to be amazing what God is going to be doing in the lives of his people. But I am telling you, get ready. For God will do something powerful. 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 Amen. Powerful. Powerful. You would hear that a 12 year old is moving in the glory. Amen. And then you hear 30 year old is moving in the glory. Yes. You hear that a woman with eight kids is moving in the glory. Amen. And you hear that a man who's, uh, who's been divorced and, and divorced and divorced and, and, and literally is kind of confused, you know, but moving in the glory. <laughs> because God has erased yes. their story and brought them into a new place. New. Oh my God, we give you glory. Thank for you there Lord. is no one like you. There is someone God is healing them. From, from ringing ears. I don't, I don't know what that is, but, but it's mm. like your, your ears are ringing and God is saying to you, child of God, healing is your portion right this minute in the name of Jesus. Amen. Oh, hallelujah. There I don't are know if doors. this is the same person, yeah. uh, but it could be the same person, but it could be somebody else. Yes, ma'am. When you were speaking, I heard dizzy spells. Mm. So it could be the same person yeah, or it yeah, could be somebody yeah, else. Yeah. You're having like dizzy spells. Yeah. Because tinnitus will do that. The mm. ringing in the ear thing will sometimes cause people to lose their balance. I heard dizzy spells. My God. So if you're having those dizzy spells, God is healing you even tonight. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Let me release this word of wisdom to you, child of God. If you have to go to a Bible college, you have to go to Bible school. And I'm not talking about schools that, you know, it's just all about theology and, and so on. Now you have to go to an environment where you can get information about the practical move of God. Practical. You know, where God is tangibly mentioned, okay? Because because he, he's alive like that. Amen. Right? He's alive like that. So, so we have to be that focused on the Lord. Get as much training as you can get because this is your time. Amen. This is your time. This is your Hallelujah. time. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. God is good. Thank you, God Jesus. is good. We bask in the glory. <laughs> we bask in the glory. So we are going to turn the broadcast over to the table of exchange. It's time for our offerings. But you were also about to say that there are doors. There are doors. Yes, ma'am. Thank you. Mandala, brother. Pastor Eunice is reminding you. Yeah, <laughs> she's, she's, she's an amazing reminder. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> You're going to say something me. about doors. You said there doors, are doors are opening to crusades. Okay. Doors are opening to crusades. Powerful doors are opening to Amen. crusades. Amen. To, to outreaches. Powerful outreaches. Amen. Doors are opening up. Doors are opening up. Pastor Janelle, I hope you're hearing. Doors are opening. Doors are opening up. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. God is good. 
God is good. Thank God you, is Jesus. good. God is good. Doors are opening. Um, uh, many people have been making mention. You know, we talked about the months of June and July. So many things are happening in the area mm. of immigration. Yes. In the area of immigration, a whole lot is happening in Thank the you, area Lord. of immigration all around, all across the nations of the world. And, and, and we are believing the Lord that many people, according to the word of the Lord, will be able to travel like God had yes, said. Yes, Because I, I am telling you guys, the next 10 years travels. are going to be some very amazing years. Amen. Very, very amazing years. So we are looking forward to the goodness of the Lord like we haven't seen it before. Hallelujah, 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 you, hallelujah. Jesus. Evangelist Evelyn says, thank you for the powerful words this morning. More grace to you, sir. Amen. Grace, grace, grace to you, woman of God. Amen. Hello, Pastor Evelyn. God bless you. Minister Maka, good to have you on. Hello, Minister Banda. God bless you, woman of God. Um, I'm so wonderful having all of you join us tonight yes. and, and in some places t this morning. This morning. <laughs> <laughs> this morning. So whatever your time zone is, we are glad that you could join us. And whenever you can, please go back to this broadcast and just listen. There are some very powerful things that the Holy Ghost released tonight. And I believe that we are all partakers um, um, of what God is Thank doing. You. In yes. the name of Jesus. Amen. So table of exchange, right? Yes, sir. All right. God bless God you. Bless the you. Lord keep you, strengthen Amen. you. May his countenance shine upon you. Yes. When you go forth, Thank even you, from Jesus. now, because for some people it is morning right now, may you find amazing doors opening up in the name of Jesus. May favor greet you at the door. In Amen. the name of Jesus. Amen. God bless you. God bless you. Yes, Pastor Joan, God bless you. God bless every one of you. See you all very soon in two days. Okay, Dominic is saying something here. Okay. I signed up for a program, and when they called, they said the location was an hour away for what I wanted to do. But she stated, if I'm serious, she will open a space in the Baltimore location so I won't have to drive far. Doors opening. Doors opening. Amen. Wow, that's a powerful one. Hallelujah. Amazing. Amen. Amazing. You're amazing. welcome, Minister Mami. It was good to have you tonight. Yeah, yeah. yeah. God bless you, Minister God bless Natasha. You. God bless you, Pastor. You, you know, Pastor Colin, I am seeing people laying hands. Okay. They are moving. They are laying hands and just putting their hands there and really believing for healing. Child of God, just believe God for healing. Amen. All Amen. things are possible. To the one who to believes. The one who believes. So that'll be it for tonight. God bless you. Over to the table of exchange. God, God bless, bless you. you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. My God. Of course, tonight was absolutely amazing. Let me tell you my favorite part. Cut the head of the thing first. Talk about it later. I will never yes. forget that. I remember an incident happened. My pastor told me that's all I needed. One one phrase. <laughs> she was like, listen. Handle the thing first when we get home. We'll figure out what's right or wrong. I said, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> and from now on, from that day that's to today, <laughs> we'll cut that thing and talk about it after. No, because that's the thing. You rather handle the thing and then say, okay, next time do it like this, like this. Then they be standing there saying, should I handle it? And they come in and kill everybody. No, no. <laughs> We're not doing that. <laughs> so, yes, I love I love that part of the teaching that just says, at going back to being a son also, yeah, yeah. Addre sons address the enemy again. I remember my pastor told me one day there was something happening. I was like, dad, can you help? Can you, can you jump in and help this situation? Say something so they will stop. And my dad told me, you say it. My children address the enemy at the gate. I said, that's right. It's tight, yeah. fast. <laughs> because <laughs> I was empowered by my father to do so Amen. so yeah what about you guys um, I, I just noticed that we've been talking about healing for the past couple of weeks and it, it's just an awakening because it, it to me it seems as though God is trying to get his people not trying but God wants yeah. his people to get in order mentally physically spiritually wholeheartedly all around we need to be in a place in position structured and ready for when God says go. Yeah. We ought to be healthy yeah. in our mind, healthy in our body, healthy in our spirits. And we will be. And we will be. We are. We are healthy. We are the healed of the Lord. So, um, you know, I'm really taking heed to the words that are coming out of the prophet's mouth because it's real. Yeah. It's, and it's alive. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Absolutely. So I, I 
just been noticing the trend of the healing and um, I've, I've been praying on it. Yeah, what about you? Um, for me, um, it's definitely when you went over the scripture, um, a double-minded mind, uh, a double-minded person is the one that went over with. Mm-hmm. And, you know, when it comes to receiving your miracle, being double-minded, <coughs> the fact that um, you, you're you believing for the miracle, but then something will come in and say, okay, what about this situation? And it took me back to even when uh, Peter was walking on the water and he was like, you know, Jesus, yeah, Jesus did it. He's, you know, Jesus did a lot of miracles. But when Peter stood on the water and he was walking and then he contemplated about, oh, maybe the water splashed on his face or the wind was too hard. And then he started to rethink about, okay, he's already on the water, but he started to rethink the miracle and then he fell in. So, you know, just being double-minded in such a way that you're... You're away. F- you're walking away from the miracle yeah. instead of into the miracle. Yeah. So that really, uh, you know, stood out for me tonight. Yeah. Yeah. I love that. Yes, I love that. So with that, with everything that has been said, I want you to give your offering in that awareness, and that awareness that anywhere that you were asleep in in these matters, you are awake now, mm-hmm. and we're going to pray. We're going to pray in faith believe in God, that everything that was said on this table tonight will be our portion. And the areas where you know that you maybe you don't walk in it or you've failed in those areas or, you know, maybe you 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 had an issue and you felt like my pastor didn't call me. Now you're awake. You know, okay, I was supposed to call them. We're, we're stepping into a place of repentance and coming into something new. Yeah. Yes. Amen? Yeah. So we're coming today saying, Father, you know what? I am awake. I thank you for, for revelation. I thank you that the light has come and there will be a shift. Yes. So on that, we're going to pray. Pastor Nadine, yes, you want to pray absolutely. for us? So wherever you are, please hold up your offering. The number should be at the bottom, 301-900-9102. And let us pray. Father, we thank you. We honor you. We cherish you, Lord, for your word this evening. Father, we thank you, O oh God that at the entrance of your word is light and it brings understanding to the simple. So, Father, we grab a hold of this word as we hold on to our offering and waving it unto you, Father, in the name of Jesus. Here is our seed. Here is us, O oh God, showing you our faith, Father, that what was presented to us tonight, O oh God, we believe it and we receive it in the name of Jesus. So, Father, as we sow our seed, O oh God, as we give our offering, Father, press down, shake it together, running over. Father, we're believing, oh God, that good measure would be given back unto us in the mighty name of Jesus. So, Father, we honor you. We ask, oh God, that you touch those, oh God, that are afflicted. As the word says, Father, as they have received prayer on tonight, we thank you for healing throughout the body, mind, body, and soul. Father, we give you all the praise, we give you all the honor, and we give you all the glory. In Jesus' name, amen, amen, amen. So, we'll be going to camp. Woo-hoo. August 15th through the 18th, Pastor yes. Peter and Pastor Pauline and the entire Rich the Nations Ministries will be ministering in Ashland. You do not want to miss that, so register. It is free, but you do have to register because I'm pretty sure we'll be at capacity this time around. People have missed summer camp, and summer camp is open. Amen. And so after that, we have the youth retreat still at camp. It's yes. going to be the 21st and the 22nd, the 20th and 21st, sorry, of August. You want to register your children for that as well. They're going to be ages 3 to 17, so everybody can come. They'll be able to stay overnight. Everything is going to be free, but you do have to register your children, and registration for that will be closing soon. And then we have the weekend retreat with Dr. Kange in Pennsylvania. It is going to be amazing. Yeah, it's going to be amazing. (laughs) It is going to be amazing. If you went to the last one, you already know it was amazing. And this one is going to be at a higher level of amazingness. <laughs> Hallelujah. So and you, people can still register. Yes, yeah, so people can still register for that, but registration for that will be closing very, very soon. So you want to register for that. Link is going to be in the comment section. Next year, there is going to be a camp meeting in Violent. Get yourself ready for that. There's going to be, weeks. I'm telling you, 10 <laughs> days of revival. And you do not want to miss that. We're giving you the buzz right now so you can tell your people. We are expecting a great move of God. And that camp meeting will be happening in July 2022. Along with all the other wonderful things that God is going to do next year. Catapult, the prayer summit. And we never know what else is coming up. So stay tuned for that. Otherwise, this has been the Kanye Household of Faith. Where we bring you 
the word of restoration in the spirit of faith. And we'll see you Tuesday, Thursday. What day is it? Today's Tuesday? Today's Tuesday. Oh, we'll see you Thursday. Bye, guys. Bye, Zoom. Bye, Zoom.